Today we'll study lesson number two in unit one that we talked about before, which is talking about livers. But now we need to make, to make a revision for the uh, previous part. Uh, let's remember what's meant by liver. The liver is a rigid bar, rotated around fulcrum, and uh, affected by two forces, effort force and resistance force. But now we need to know what are the distance between effort force and uh, fulcrum and the, resist the distance between resistance and fulcrum. We can call it force arm, so effort force and fulcrum, so it belongs to effort force. It will be force arm. But here, resistance, so it will be from this distance between resistance and fulcrum, it will be resistance arm. So let's make to know the definition. Here, effort force arm, it is the distance between fulcrum and effort force. Resistance arm, it is the distance between fulcrum and resistance force. So it's very, very simple. When you're talking about force arm, so fulcrum and effort force. Fulcrum is the common. When talking about resistance arm, so it's between the fulcrum and resistance force. Okay. We need to know that uh, what are the importance of livers? Yes, I know that we are talking about it before, but we need to, speci to specify our talking about uh, the first point in the, in the importance of livers, which was about increasing the force. Or the livers, we can't use it in, uh, in, we, in we can't use it in increasing the force, but we have conditions. Before we know these conditions, we have to know what's, what are the laws of livers, or what is the law of liver. To deduce this law, we can get different value for effort force and for force R, resistance and resistance R. And we make times between force and its R, and resistance times its R. And they try to find the relation between force and its arm and uh, with resistance times its arm. So we, make, we need to know the relation between force times its arm and resistance times its arm. Let's talk about the first line. Here in the first line we have what we have. Force. The force here, 50 Newton. So it was force. So this is force, to join it with Newton. Force arm distance. So it may be with centimeter or meter. Okay, we we'll find that the force arm, 40 centimeter. And if we calculate the resistance, so it will buy 50 Newton. Resistance arm, 40 centimeter. Okay, this is our given. But what is the result between force times its R? It, we find it well, the, uh, the result of this equation is 2000. Okay, to calculate the, the times between result, resistance and resistance R, we find it also equal 2000. So it may be by chance, yani, it's not real. Study another example. Force 60 Newton, force arm 30 Newton, 30 centimeter, resistance 120 Newton, resistance arm 50, 15 centimeter. We find that force times its arm value equal 1800. And resistance times its arm equal 1800. So they are equals also. Take another example, maybe they are different here. 70 Newton force, 20 centimeter force arm, 35 Newton resistance, 40 centimeter resistance arm. Also, they are equal 1400, 1400. The last example 20 Newton force, 10, 10, uh, 10 centimeter in force arm, 25 Newton in, R in resistance, and 8 centimeter in R resistance arm, they are also equal to 100 and 200. So we have here the relation is equal, the relation equal. 
So from that, we get the rule, the general rule, which is force times its arm equal resistance times its arm. And this is general. So this is called what? This is called the law of levers. So we can say that the law of levers equal R or R, force times its arm equal resistance times its arm. And note that force and R, force, uh, effort force and resistance, they, their units with Newton. And force arm and resistance arm, unit with centimeter or meter. Why? Because they are what? They are distance. Okay. Now, remember this law because we will use it in the next, what? The next examples. This is a problem. Here we have fulcrum, effort force, and resistance. From the opposite figure, calculate the effort force. So we can, we have here, we need to know. We have to know three known and one unknown. So here, at the first step, we write the law. Don't forget it. The first step, write the law. Force times its arm equal resistance times its arm. Yes. Effort force. Where is the effort force here? Oh, this is the unknown one here. There are question mark. So we can write it with a symbol. Where is the its arm? Its arm with what? Its arm of force. Where is it? Five or ten? We said that. Effort force arm. The distance between effort force and fulcrum. It equal five centimeter. So it's, not, it's arm five centimeter. Equal. Don't forget to write the equal. R. Which R? Yes. 20 Newton. 20 Newton. It's R not 5, but a 10. Yes. 10 centimeter. So, very simply, we can calculate it to get uh, the effort force in one side and the other numbers to the other side. So, effort force equal 20 times 10 over or divided 5. And the result will be 40. And stop here. We have to write the unit. Don't forget to write the unit. We're talking about force. So force or arm, Newton. If we have here arm, so it will be centimeter or meter. Okay. Here we have a draw or figure. If we didn't have a figure, how we can calculate this part? So this is effort force affecting a second class lever equals 10 100 newton so in the draft here we write that force equal 100 newton okay this is the first number let's complete the force arm length equal 20 centimeter 25 okay stop force arm equal 25 centimeter containing okay we stop here and the resistance equal 500 newton we write that resistance equal 500 newton there are three so we have to get another one calculate the resistance arm so the unknown with was what yes resistance arm this is the unknown the first step don't forget it write the rule Force times its arm equal resistance times its arm. Force 100. Its arm 25 equal resistance 500. Its arm, yes, we want this. So we want what? Resistance arm. Resistance arm equal 100 times 25 divided by 500 for equal. Five. Five what? We're talking about the arm. So it will be centimeter. Why we write the centimeter? Because the force arm, it's unit with centimeter. If the unit here meter, we write here meter. If this is centimeter, we write here centimeter. We can find example on these problems at your booklet, page number five, and they will be your homework. Okay. We have another part in this lesson, which is types of levers. 
Yes, I know that we are talking about this part later. But here we want to know which of these levers used to save effort or used to increase the force that we are talking about it and the, and the start of our lesson. We can use all these classes to save effort? Of course, no. So we can use what? We can use, we, we have to study the first, each type or each class, and know which of them save effort and which doesn't. But before we start, we have to know that this is MP. Very important. The lever, save effort. When we find that resistance R larger than or longer than resistance R. So when we find that the force R longer than resistance R, it, we can say it saving effort. But if they are equal or in the opposite where distance arm is longer than force arm, this is wrong. Doesn't save effort. What's meant by save effort at the first? By doing a small force, we can get high resistance. How? By using these pliers, we can't pull the nail with our hand. We can't pull it with our hand. So we use what? We use pliers. This plier, by a small effort, from this side, we can pull this a, this nail. So, by using a small effort, we get a high resistance force. This has happened when the resist force arm longer than resistance arm. Here the fulcrum, and the resistance. So this is the resistance arm, and this is force. So it will be force arm. So when the force arm longer than resistance arm. It's a save effort. Okay. Ha. Huh. What? Uh, sorry. What is the type of this lever? Yes. Fulcrum between resistance and effort force. Sure. It is from the first class levers. Let's continue. In the first class lever, we have three cases. A, B, and C. When we're talking about A, we find that fulcrum between effort force and the resistance. But the distance between effort force and fulcrum, and fulcrum and the resistance, they are equal. So we have that effort, effort force arm equal resistance arm. So save effort or not saving effort? Doesn't. Why doesn't? Because we need that force arm longer than resistance arm to save effort. But here they are equal. So it doesn't save effort. Okay. B. Here, first class or second class or third class, we find that the fulcrum in the middle. So it, they were not equal. But we need to know that this is the first class. Okay. We agree with that. But the distance between effort force and fulcrum is longer than resistance and fulcrum. Yes. So here we find that resistance arm is less than force arm or force arm longer than resistance arm. So we have here the condition. So it will save effort or conserve effort. Okay. So we have here a case, a case from first class. What about third class? What about three, third cases? C. C we find that the fulcrum between effort force and resistance. So it will be also the first class lever. But here, the resistance arm less than force arm. Save effort? Of course not. When the resistance arm longer than force arm, it doesn't save effort. So we have here in the first class lever three cases, A and B and C. One save effort and the other doesn't save. So we can see the first class lever sometimes save effort. Sometimes save effort. Okay. Let's move to another class. Second class, we find the R between F and O. Resistance between effort force and fulcrum. So we find that where is the resistance R? Yes, we hear the resistance R. Very small. Where is the effort force arm? Here. 
this distance? No. We have to catch the with fulcrum. But we have here resistance. Never mind. We need all distance, the whole distance between effort force and fulcrum. So which is longer? We find here the longer part is the effort force arm. And always. So we find that force arm longer than resistance arm. So we say that it's always save effort. And they didn't have cases like in the first class, but it's one, only one case. It's very simple and easy, I like second class. So what are the third class? The third class, we find that effort force between resistance and fulcrum. Where is the effort force arm? Here, this is the effort force arm. Where is the resistance arm? Yes, all this distance. So we find that always the resistance arm longer than effort force arm. So resistance arm longer than effort force arm, so it always doesn't save effort. Like what? Like here in the tweezers. We say that it is a third class lever. We can use it in uh, making a huge effort or save a huge effort. But it used for another purpose, which is, yes, accuracy and performance. To pick up a very, very small object with high accuracy. So, it, maybe it doesn't use, uh, in, uh, doesn't use in another, in saving effort, but it has many importance in other side. This is the second, third class lever. Okay, this is the third class lever. Uh, sorry, the second class lever. It's, it's like nutcracker. So here, by a very small push here, we can breaking the knot, which we can't break it with our hand. You can't catch the knot and uh, break it with your hand, of course not. But by using this nutcracker, by making a small effort from this side, we can get a huge effort or a huge resistance by ca crashing the knot. So this is a very, very important part, which is types of liver. We have three classes, first and second and third. The first class, sometimes save effort. Sometimes save effort. When there is the effort force arm longer than resistance arm. Yes, in the second class liver, it always saving effort because it always have force arm longer than resistance arm. And third class liver, it always doesn't save effort because always has the resistance arm longer than force arm. And by this talking, it will be the end of our lessons number two. And uh, I need you to study hard. And if there are anything difficult, we can contact with each other on this side. Thanks.